Hey guys, Herbal Prepper here, and today I'm showing you how to make gin-soaked raisins. Now these are golden raisins or white raisins. They're, they're, their name is used interchangeably. Um, there's a lot of old wives' tales or folklore remedies around gin-soaked raisins and being used for arthritis. Some people say, oh, it helped me tremendously. Some people say, oh, it's a placebo effect. And then others say, it's crap, it doesn't work at all. Um, well, as an herbalist, I see the medicinal value here. Um, gin is made, or flavored, I should say, with juniper berries. And juniper berries have always been and are still used today for its anti-inflammatory effect, pain relieving. And raisins are both anti-inflammatory, pain relieving, and also antioxidant. So it seems to me, logically, <laughs> that if you know a little bit about the ingredients that you're using, you would obviously see the medicinal value. Now, um, if you have severe joint pain, are you going to walk away like a new man tomorrow? No. Let's be logical here. Uh, some people say it helps them within a month. Some people say two, three months. It really just depends on your body. Now, you can always add extra juniper berries to this, and if I were you, I would definitely... Uh, put them in a mortal and pestle and give it a little crunch or two to help expose some of the properties because I cannot vouch for any certain type of gin having more juniper berries than the other. It's kind of a house secret. I would assume that most companies are not going to give out their, you know, trade house secrets about how much juniper berries they use per batch. Um, but we know that alcohol is a good solvent and a good preserver, so this is why they're using tinctures. So if you have uh, juniper berries thrown into a batch as flavoring, it's obviously going to pull out the properties and put it into the alcohol. Now, um, they probably don't soak it as long as you would in a tincture, but regardless, you're about to make this, and you'll have this sitting for about seven to ten days. Little, You really don't have to keep up with it just until the raisins have now soaked up all the alcohol. Um, so you'll have extra juniper berries in there if you decide to put it in there. It's no big deal if you don't. So basically, guys, it's really simple. I just took one box and I spread it out over two, um, let me see, little, they're not plates, they're not bowls, they're, I don't know what they are, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to pour your gin over your raisins until it's just on the top. Let me swap hands. I'm not good with stirring with my left hand. So always use a uh, wooden spoon, no uh, metal, no plastics because of leaching. Um, you want to use natural things, glass and wood is always best. So you just want to kind of disturb them a little bit. Always uh, prepare and disturb your plant material. You always will hear me say that when making tinctures. Always uh, expose as much properties of whatever you are tincturing as possible. Same goes with this. So. What you're going to do is just make sure they're covered. Um, the reason why you want to do this is you want to expose as much to the alcohol as possible. And you also want to keep it covered pr for uh, preservation. Uh, same thing when you're making tinctures, guys. When you have your uh, plant material at the top and it's not fully covered with alcohol, there is a possible chance for mold. Um, so you want to keep it completely covered and when doing this, you find that uh, it's preserved and it's used as a solvent. So swapping hands again. So guys, you're just going to sit there and, and expose this, stir it up, disturb it. And you want to do this, you know, every day or so, just kind of give it a good stir. And then what will happen is uh, you'll start to see some of the alcohol evaporate. The liquid will be soaked up into the raisins. And then um, after about... Mm -hmm, a week or so, a little bit more or less, depending on how long it takes your raisins to soak them up, uh, then they're ready to eat. And most people say, you'll see it all over the internet, you know, nine raisins. <laughs> Guys, if you take ten, it's not going to kill you. If you take eight, you're not going to not feel the effects. You gauge it to your own body. I might can take twenty and be fine. You know, it just, um, the small amount of alcohol that is in these, uh, you should not get drunk. Um, but always take caution when using any type of alcohol before driving. Um, for those of you that are recovering alcoholics, there is an alternative. 
You can use vinegar, you can use honey, um, you know we use those as extracts as well. Uh, honey and vinegar both will actually work as a solvent. Vinegar will not last as long, so make sure you keep that in mind, guys. Alcohol is a preserver, so it's going to preserve these and all other tinctures for a very long time, as opposed to vinegar. Um, also, vinegar will attract uh, gnats and things like that, so you want to make sure you cover it so that uh, no gnats decide to munch on your stuff here. So, uh, you can use glycerin. Um, I would warm glycerin up. Um, but you can use glycerin, you can use honey, you can use vinegar, and or alcohol. So those are just some alternatives for you guys. So give this a good stir, cover it up, and let it sit. Come back every day and check on it. After it's ready, store them in a mason jar. You can put them in your refrigerator. They'll last longer. Or you can keep them on your counter. Um, so hope this video is a blessing to you guys. Until next time.